So, so far guys, we've been looking at how animals know about their environment and how do they ensure they end up in the right place. Today what we're going to start doing is looking at not only how they get in the right place, but how do they know when to get there. To start off, we're going to need to look at why is time so important to animals. And since all the animals that we're learning about live on Earth, we need to learn a little bit about the Earth's natural cycles before we start anything else. So as you know, Earth's a planet of our solar system and it orbits the sun every 365 and a quarter days. And if you're wondering about the quarter days, well, every four years, obviously you've got a full day. So those four quarters make up the extra day we get for a leap year. So when Earth completes one orbit of the sun, we know that that's a year. And during that year, as you well know, in most parts of the Earth, we have seasons. So the climate changes, it gets warmer or cooler. Now, the reason for these changes in climate when it gets warmer or cooler isn't because it's getting closer or further away from the sun, but because it's on a tilt, as it moves around the sun, Sometimes the northern hemisphere might be tilted towards the sun and the southern hemisphere might be tilted away from the sun or vice versa. And this is what gives us summer and winter. And then halfway in between those phases, we've got spring and autumn. So over the course of 365 and a quarter days, we've gone through each of the four seasons. And you can see straight away that there's obviously going to be some quite big changes in the climate that an animal living out there might need to be aware of. Of course, as you're already aware, as well as the Earth orbiting the sun, it's also revolving on its own axis, spinning around once each day, every 24 hours. So as it's spinning around, half of the Earth is in daylight and half of the Earth is in darkness. And again, over the course of 24 hours, an environment for an animal is going to change quite a lot. OK, let's just review what we've looked at so far. So a few of the Earth's cycles involve the seasons, the year and the day. All of these involve time and things changing over time. So that's going to be really important to any animal that's living anywhere on Earth. Whether it's active in the day, active at night, breeding in the spring, or whatever else. Now on a clear evening, you'll look up into the sky and you'll see the moon. And you'll know that the moon plays a really important role into things that happen on Earth. In terms of space, the moon's really close to the Earth, probably about 400,000 kilometers away. But even when something's that far away, the moon's so big that it can still exert quite a strong gravitational force. The moon's gravitational force has quite a big effect on the seas more than anything else, which is ultimately the cause of the tides. When the moon is close to a particular point on the Earth's surface, the water in the oceans is pulled up towards it. This gives us a high tide. Because as we've already said, the Earth is revolving on its axis once every 24 hours, the point of the Earth's surface that's closest to the moon changes during the course of the day. Over a 24 hour period, you get around two tidal cycles or just short of that. That means you get one high water or high tide every 12 hours and one low water around every 12 hours too. As you can imagine, if you're an animal living on a beach, your environment's gonna change quite a lot over the course of 12 hours. When the tide goes out, things are gonna get a little bit dry. And when the tide comes in, obviously things are gonna get a little bit more wet. For an animal living on a rocky shore, Changes to the environment like these are going to dictate what time you feed, what time you rest, and so on. So again, the Earth's cycles are really important to the timing of our animals that live on the Earth. The Moon's also orbiting the Earth about once every 27 days. As the Moon goes around the Earth, sometimes it lines up with the Sun. So the Sun and the Moon are both in the same direction in relation to the Earth. Almost like the three bodies in a line. Sun, Moon, Earth. When this happens, the gravity from the Sun and the Moon are both in the same direction, so the pull is extra strong because the pull of the Sun's gravity is combined with the pull of the Moon's gravity. When this happens, we have an extra high tide, which we call a spring tide. You also get a spring tide when the Moon's the opposite side of the Earth to the Sun. So we've got Sun, Earth, Moon. When that happens, you've got two big lumps of water either side of the Earth, which again gives you another spring tide. Although this tide isn't quite as high as when the Moon and the Sun are both pulling the water in the same direction. So over one lunar cycle, about every 27 days, we'd expect to have two spring tides. Once again, over the course of these 27 days, if the height of the tide is changing every day, the environment's changing, and that's going to dictate the way that our animals need to live. So that's about it for what you need to look at in terms of Earth cycles. Have a quick think about these questions. Maybe pause the podcast for a second, and then we'll go through the answers just to see if you've picked everything up you need to. So how long are the following cycles? A, an annular cycle. B, a daily cycle. C, a tidal cycle. D, a lunar cycle. Now for each of these cycles, can you remember how the Earth changes during the course of each one? How does the Earth change 
during the course of a year, for example. Okay, so here are the answers. The annular cycle is 365 and a quarter days. The daily cycle is 24 hours. The tidal cycle is about every 12 hours, 12.4 to be exact. And the lunar cycle is around every 27 days. Over the course of the year, we have the seasons where the climate would change. And yeah, I know some of you are already thinking about this. It doesn't change so much in the tropics, but everywhere else, south or north of the tropics, the climate's gonna change over the course of the year. Even in the tropics, we still have wet and dry seasons. Obviously, over the course of a day, 24 hours, we'd expect to see changes in terms of when it's light and when it's dark, or night and day. Changes during the tidal cycle are gonna be the height of the water, from low water to high water. So at part of the cycle, the tide goes right out, so the water get level goes really low. And other times the tide comes in and the water level becomes high, which covers the things on the shore. Finally, we've got the lunar cycle. And the main effect of the lunar cycle is the change of how high the high tide is and how high the low tide is. So at a spring tide, we've got an extra high tide and an extra low tide. Where at other times of the lunar cycle, the tide's not quite so high or quite so low. Sometimes I'm sure you've been to the beach and noticed it's a particularly low tide or a particularly high tide. That's probably due to the lunar cycle. If you got any of those wrong, remember you can rewind me this time. So feel free, pause it, go back and have another check. So I'm hearing you scream. What has all this astronomy got to do with timing mechanisms and biology? Well, I'm hoping some of you are realising that timing mechanisms that are set out by animals are mostly synchronised with the way that the Earth changes night and day, high tide or low tide, winter or summer, for example. Okay, so we're going to end this podcast here, and the next podcast will focus on how animals actually relate with these Earth cycles, and uh, how we actually study that. So enough for now. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned lots. Speak to you soon. Keep it real.